Hey folks, Ben here from the Fiberglass Factory. Just want to talk to you a little bit about release agents today. So if you're making anything out of a mold, then you're going to have to be using a release agent so that it doesn't stick. Just like uh, you would grease up a, a baked tin before you make a cake so that the cake can come out. You need to do the same thing when it comes to, uh, comes to fiberglass parts. Yeah, so we've got a couple of different carbonaro axes here that we use. Uh, this is a TR108, which is um, specifically without silicon in it, which um, we use with a, P a, a product called PBA, polyvinyl alcohol, and it's basically spraying on a layer of uh, liquid glad wrap. So uh, that's how it sort of works. And then we've also got just a honey wax, which we use, uh, which has got quite a lot of silicon in it. And we don't use that with the PBA because they just don't like each other. But um, but once we've broken a mold in, then we can just switch to honey wax, and that works really well. Now, um, so that's when we when we're producing parts. Uh, maybe the first few pulls we'll use a combination of the TR and the and the PBA, and this is just gets sprayed on. Although it can be wiped on, we prefer to spray it on for a little little better finish. Um, once the mold's been uh, been broken in that's the honey wax we use so we also have pe semi-permanent release agents as well which i don't have with me today but um they're uh, they're quite expensive but uh but the good thing about those is that they they won't leave any sort of film or texture on the on whatever you're copying off or or producing so the pba does does leave a natural little bit orange peel like if you were painting a car um, but semi-permanents are like using using wax, where it's not it's leaving nothing but the mold surface uh, to copy off. So if I'm doing a, a really glossy mold, then I'll like use the semi-permanents as well as a bit of wax as well, and that'll give me a, a, a perfect replication. All right. So we so when we're copying off rough things though, uh, we can there's some amazing things we can do with with PVA and wax. So uh, if I'm copying off, just suppose I wanted to copy off this cardboard, it's very porous, okay? Um, so what I would do is I would actually coat it with the PVA, probably probably put 10 coats down on this, 10, um, you know, maybe five light coats and start to heavy the coats up towards the end. And I end, end up with a, a, quite a thick film of, of PVA on there and um, it'll, it'll have sealed all that and then I can wax over the top of it with a bit of honey wax and the and the part will come off perfectly. It's the same with body filler. Uh, if we're copying off plaster, plaster is extremely porous, more porous than this cardboard actually. Uh, so you've just got to really lay down, lay down so much um, PVA. But this stuff's amazing. You can copy off anything that's solid. So um, so when we're copying off rough stuff, body filler, um, yeah, we'll do that sort of process. If we're copying off something that's a really nice high gloss finish, uh, then we can either we can either use a TR wax and a little bit of PVA, so that'll keep the finish relatively good, or we can do the semi permanents, um, which produce an amazing result. Just costs a lot more. Uh, when a tin of honey wax and TR is about thirty dollars for a, for a liter of like semi permanents, you're looking at one hundred and twenty hundred and twenty dollars. You know. Um, PVA is reasonably cheap as well, um, but this is sort of your cheaper options. So when we, I, I did say that we don't use these two together, but it's only because we don't put PVA over the top of honey wax because the the um, PVA doesn't like the honey wax. But you can wax over the top of the PVA, so um, and and it works really well. So that's what I was saying with the copying off the cardboard. Now, if you're copying off clay or a, or a substance that um, sort of got moisture in it, then this is not um, the way you do it. Um, you'll have you'll use either a bit of glad wrap or a bit of aluminium foil to create the rough shape, and then you can fiberglass over the top of it, and it won't stick to it because of the because you've got that barrier there. And then uh, usually that you would use that maybe for a pattern. Um, but you could potentially use that for a, for a really rough mold um, to create some some cool shape for whatever you're doing fish pond or or, um, or whatever yeah so that so the imagination can go wild with what you can create um, when you've got the right release agents and the way to actually pull the part the part or mold off 
whatever you're copying. Now when you, when you are uh, using honey wax in a mold, it is really important to get all the wax out of the, uh, buff all the wax off the mold just to stop any residue or build up of wax on the mold and that happens quite quickly if you don't rub it off properly. So it's just a, an application, wipe on and then get a clean rag and wipe it off um, like you'd wax a car. Alright, um, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. If you've got any more questions, um, feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help. See ya.